Dzień dobry moi drodzy, jest piąta rano, a my jesteśmy na lotnisku we Wrocławiu i lecimy do Londynu. Chodźcie z nami. Moi drodzy, oto jesteśmy. Kolebka londyńskiego drum and bassu. Hospital Records. No więc cześć wszystkim, jesteśmy w siedzibie Hospital Records, jest ze mną uh, Tony Coleman, aka London Electricity. Uh, I'm switching to English now because Tony is English and we're in England right now. Yep. So uh, it's so good to get to know you and, and meet you in person. Welcome uh, to hospital. <laughs> it's, so, it's so great in here, we are in a great studio. Um, first of all, I will tell you the story of how it happened that we actually are here. Yeah. Because it's crazy, you know, that we pushed so much to have this interview. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, all yeah, started yeah. in October last year. We went for an event called the One Love Festival in right. Wrocław. Right. And on this festival, it was like probably one of the best concerts ever we did in our life. Um, Amazing. And we were, had so such a great fun. And at the end of the concert, we just looked at you like, you know, being so having so much fun and joy and you know like uh, like uh, hugging with people and stuff like yeah. that and I looked at you and I said oh my god that's the guy we need for our event <laughs> and that's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I'm gonna see I saw just you know pure passion and you know joy of what you were doing you weren't like all right I'm out <laughs> yeah you were like that was very passionate so that was the moment when I realized we have to do it with you <laughs> But I wasn't sure if it is possible, you know, then the first email, stuff like that. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so I'm I'm so happy to uh, to finally be here and you know like we call this place a, a cradle of dr drum and bass music. Okay. Do you think it's do you think it's true? Do you think it's legit? <laughs> the cradle of, the dr cradle, of yeah. drum and bass music. It, that, yeah. That's interesting. Um, uh, I, maybe I would use the word uh, a kind of hot house. You know, okay. okay. Like a this is an environment where we really grow okay you know we grow drum and bass here okay. it wasn't born here it wasn't born here where was it born no 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 we we only started hospital records started in 1996 and jungle music which is the the origin of drum and bass really started in about 1990 wow so I always thought it was the other way, the other way around. I thought drum and bass was first, no. and jungle was the second. No, there's now a, a revival of jungle. Okay, that's happening now. Wow, but it's a, really a revival of old school. Yeah. So the original kind of like jungle music um, originated in North London, an area called Tottenham, mm -hmm. um, and uh, people like General Levy. Okay. You know, you know, you know, incredible, incredible. by General Levy. Uh huh. No, I, I don't, you don't know. know. Okay, get to know. That's okay. a seminal, like original. Okay. That's where it's there's also um, Shy FX, a original Nutter. These are tunes that were made in the very, very early nineties, before okay. Hospital. Before Hospital started. Yeah. All right. And for in general, for the drum and bass music and jungle music. London, in general, is the capital of it, globally, it's, or it's, are there any other cities that count? London and Bristol. And Bristol as well, so England. Yeah, Bristol. London and Bristol. London and Bristol. Uh, specific, specifically London and Bristol, because um, jungle music started in London, but in Bristol, because there there's a very, very big Afro-Caribbean community mm -hmm. in Bristol, it was adopted, and the sound was different. So, whereas in London, the sound started off very much as jungle, mm -hmm. in, in other words, amen, mm -hmm. amen breaks, mm -hmm. um, with a very particular kind of uh, 808 bass drum mm -hmm. kind of sound. In Bristol, the sound was more of a stepper. Okay. So the drums, instead of being a kind of like 
Episode step and says dum bat bum bat bum bat bum bat. And you had artists like Ronnie Size, DJ Die, you know, represent Crust, um, DJ Sav, all of those Bristol DJs. They developed their own flavour. And really, I think they were more instrumental in the transformation from jungle to drum and bass. Mm -hmm. I think that happened in Bristol, really. So, Bristol's really important for the whole story okay. of what we do. Okay. You know? yeah. And uh, and then in London, it started like it started changing, and we started getting people like Fotech and Bookham, and you know, um, a lot of the originators started to come through with very very different sounds and different techniques and different sub genres and you know uh, all right was it um, for you uh, like uh, to create drum and bass was it um, different uh, 15 20 years ago than today how uh, how how does your workflow when creating music today look yeah like? I mean like when 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 I made pull the plug which is the first mm -hmm. London electricity album um, the studio was very different <laughs> than this. I mean, it was in a, di a different part of London, but <laughs> I mean, we had a desk that was about this big, but it was a okay. mixing desk. Okay. And it had 156 channels. Okay. So it was a huge mixing desk. And we had multi track tape recorder. So we had 24 tracks of tape and an Atari. <laughs> wow, Atari. An Atari ST computer that was running um, the very, very first version of Cubase. But it, did, it wasn't called Cubase then. It was called Steinberg 24. Okay, okay. Which is a very basic MIDI sequencer. Okay. And that was synchronized to the tape and it controlled samplers. So we had samplers to be able to sample drums and. We had racks and racks and racks of compressors, <laughs> delay <laughs> units, yeah. loads of outboard gear. Today computers do all of that, right? Now you do it all in the box. <laughs> all in so the box. This, uh -huh. tiny, this tiny little box, okay. this contains like the world's biggest studio, okay. basically. Like tons of equipment that we would have here, <laughs> that, yeah. we, that we used to have here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And which makes life easy, mm -hmm. but it makes it too easy. Okay. So that comes with a lot of problems. If I, if I can compare it to cars. Okay. Um, we if, like we like this direction <laughs> where we are going. If we look to the future, self-driving electric cars. Yeah. Now, that's a terrifying prospect for me. Yeah. And I think quite a terrifying prospect for probably for you, because mm -hmm. there are going to be in maybe 10, 15 years time, there will be competitions where there'll, there'll be racetracks and self-driving cars yeah, competing true. against each other yeah. and they'll be drifting uh, and, and it'll all be down to the programmer, yeah. the guy who programmed or the girl who programmed the code or the child <laughs> okay. who programmed the code. <laughs> <laughs> they they will be the ones who are competing. That's a crazy perspective. <laughs> but it's that. true. Yeah, it is true. It's and this can happen with music. Yeah. At the end of the day, we can listen to music that is created by a program and an there's, algorithm. There's already a, there's already al algorithms that can compose. It, and I'd say compose <laughs> very very loosely. <laughs> can put together build musical tracks in okay. a certain style. Okay. Um, there are certain styles of music that are very easy to recreate algorithmically, like trance, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Trance is really easy because nearly all trance tracks, they're kind of the same. Yeah. Um, certain types of drum and bass can be created algorithmically, but they have to be, uh, how can I put this without offending people? Um, <laughs> there are certain producers who, okay. who make tracks that all sound the same. Okay, yeah. Now. You can then take those tracks, feed them into an algorithm piece of software that you've built. They will be analysed, and, and the, the algorithm will realise yeah. that 
this guy or this girl always writes the music in this way. Mm -hmm. So if I do that, I can churn out endless numbers of tracks that sound like this producer. Yeah. Um, it's the same in house music. It's the same in trap music. It's very much happening in pop music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pop music that's being written by algorithmic uh, software that is owned by Universal Music, by Sony, by Warner Brothers. And they not only write the actual music, they write the lyrics as well. And <laughs> there are now vocal generators mm -hmm. that can sing. Yeah, sure. So it's, it's not going to be long before there are records in the charts that have no human involvement. And that's kind of scary, but it gives a great opportunity to people like us because our music is very, very different. My music mm -hmm. is impossible to copy mm -hmm. because each track is, t is totally different. So if you, you were to listen to my new album, each track is completely different from, from the other tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and most of them are fucking mental. Okay. <laughs> so an algorithm wouldn't understand yeah. what was going on. Or it would collapse. And it would, yeah, it, it would basically explode. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, if we are already at cars topic and, you know, uh, AI cars, mm. let's go to old school, traditional, <laughs> yeah, petrol engine cars. Yeah. So you will, you will, um, you will have a concert uh, at our event, mm. which is a, a, an event for Japanese cars. Yeah. Um, were you ever in common with cars? Were you, uh, did you, did, are you, are you familiar with it or are you totally out of this world? Um, even though I've got a Japanese wife, uh, I don't have a Japanese car. Um, I actually have a German car at the moment. Uh, my my favourite ever car that, that I owned, mm -hmm. well, actually, I think the favourite car I ever owned was the first car I, I ever owned. And it was when I was still studying, so it must have been in 1980. I had no money, mm -hmm. and every day I walked past a car at the end of my road that was in someone's garden, and it was uh, it was called an Austin Riley, mm -hmm. really old mm -hmm. British car, really small, and I kept walking past it and thinking this car's really great. I want a car. <laughs> okay. I've got a license, I want a car. I can't afford to buy a car, what am I going to do? So, eventually I knocked on this old guy, guy's door and I said, um, that, that car in your garden, do you want it? And he said, how much are you going to give it to me? Like, how much money, you, you know? So, I, I said, well, I've got 10 pounds. <laughs> Something to start with. And he said, 15 <laughs> all right so i paid 15 pounds for this austin riley and we got it started and drove it around the corner to the flat i was renting and then it stopped working <laughs> all right oh just like and japanese cars i know nothing about engines i'm not a mechanic okay. i'm a musician okay so i was standing there and it literally about two hours after I bought it, I was standing there kind of like scratching my head with the bonnet open, thinking, <laughs> right. well, what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> and this guy drove past and he said, do you want to sell that? <laughs> okay. So uh, I was like, yeah, if, I'll, 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 I'll sell it for 200 pounds. Okay. And uh, he was like, yeah, great. Right. Here's, Here's the right. cash. So he gave me the money and took the car. Really? Wow, that's a so, story. <laughs> so I made a profit of, of £185 in about two hours, which was really good money when yeah. you're a poor student with no money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you know, um, entrepreneurial skills. <laughs> the best proper car that I ever owned, uh, I bought in about the year 2002, and it was a Mercedes uh Pillarless coupe from 1975. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, 
and uh, I think it's 280 CE. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a stupid car because it's really heavy. It weighs about three tons. Okay. Um, but and it um, it drives like a boat basically. Okay. It's, yeah. it's like it's like being it's it's like it's like you're in a big boat because it mm -hmm. takes you know if if you want to turn left you turn left. You wait and then and you goes. wait <laughs> and you wait and eventually the car starts yeah, turning yeah. left. But it was pimp. It looked okay. fucking great. <laughs> and instead of the the Mercedes logo on the front, mm -hmm. we made the H. Wow. So we had the what hospital H yeah. on the front of the car. Oh, that's perfect. It was, it was, it was very, was very cool. <laughs> and it was cream. And the upholstery inside was a beautiful kind of like gray fabric. It was, it was really nice. I had a big sound system put in. And I mean, it was, probably weighed about yeah it weighed three tons it was a three liter engine so if i drove from here to birmingham mm -hmm. to do a gig it would use all the petrol okay <laughs> so it would cost me about 80 pounds okay to drive 100 miles okay you know? <laughs> um and if anyone pulled out in front of you fucking hell that was mm. scary because you couldn't really get out of their way you know uh, in the end, unfortunately, what happened was somebody drove into the side of the car oh. and completely bashed it in. So and that was it. That was it. So uh, we offer you like um, something crazy, like a drift taxi. Have you ever tried it? No. No. So no. You have my uh, you have my guarantee that you will have a drift taxi at our event. <laughs> we'll get Wicked. you an 800 or 1,000 horsepower car. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be amazing. Or if you want drag racing, it's also but drifting is much better. Yeah. The only the only thing I've had that's close to that is. I've played twice at Santa Pod. Oh wow! Um, which is in Northampton, mm -hmm. and it's it's basically the UK's only drag strip. Yeah, drag, and they do drag, drag strip. strip. There. Yeah. And it, it's quite a good one. Okay. So uh, their events manager also love hospital, oh, and right. um, we've we've done two kind of tense festivals there, if you like. Okay. And. Uh, I've been VIP trackside, and you know they they have all, all the kind of like the special cars with all the flames. Yeah, and the, the dragsters. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's it's really it's really funny, and I spent a bit of time with Terry Grant. Do mm -hmm. you know Terry Grant? Nope. He's he's a kind of world champion sort of stunt driver. Okay. Okay. So he he does that drifting thing where he'll <laughs> he'll be drifting and then he'll go into a donut. And get out of the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw and that. Go and get someone's phone. Get back in the car, and then <laughs> go and do a yeah. load of jumps and stunts with their phone, and you know, on himself, and climb uh -huh. on the roof while he's spinning, and yeah. then kind of like, you know, he does all that. Crazy guys. So, Our guys uh, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm fast. not going to do that. No, <laughs> I'm not, not going to do that. that. <laughs> You're going to play drum and bass outside of the car, and then yeah. come back. <laughs> and, and they were playing drum and bass actually oh. while he was doing it. Funny, they were playing next guy and kind of stuff like that. You know, perfect. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, one more question uh, about um, hospital, mm. hospital, clinic, uh, med school. All those terms are medical. Why? How did it happen? Where is the philosophy? Well, when when we started the label, it was me and and Chris, who was a very good friend of mine. We had already had another label which had failed and we'd made all the mistakes that you can make which is a good thing to do because you learn making mistakes means that you learn unless you're really stupid in which case you <laughs> make them again okay but if you're not stupid you don't make them again so luckily we're not and it enabled us to kind of to know what not to do it's really important to know what not to do so we decided to start a new label and this was in 1995 so we took our time we, we had this massive studio that I was telling you about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we knew we wanted to work to make drum and bass but we wanted to make our own version which didn't sound like anything else and we decided to call it lounge core mm -hmm. so that was our sort of joke yeah we're gonna make lounge core you know um, so it sounds kind of relaxed and loungy and soulful, but it's 
fast and it's drum and bass, you know. Why, why is it called hospital? Well, we spent three weeks in a pub, <laughs> getting very drunk, uh, writing down shitloads of names, thinking anything we could think of, you know. And we ended up with a short list of two. And one was called Odd, as in unusual, mm -hmm. weird, weird, odd, yeah. odd music. And the other one was Hospital. And it was called called Hospital because my grandfather was a doctor and I've always been obsessed with science and chemistry. Um, I've got two boys now who are nine years old and 12 years mm -hmm. old and I love it when they come home with chemistry homework because mm -hmm. I just take over <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and, and we end up making bombs basically, you know, because okay. I know how to make okay. Any explosive. Um, so uh, I've always had this kind of love of anything to do with kind of pharmaceutical construction formula. Um, I even quite enjoy going to hospital. I know that's weird. Okay. Like <laughs> yeah, that's weird. yesterday, I, I visited a, a surgeon because I got a problem with my with my neck, yeah. and uh, I, I enjoy the the environment and. The reason we, we chose the name hospital is because we realized it's it's like a three-dimensional thing. Mm -hmm. um, it has departments. Each hospital has departments. Loads and loads of different departments that all do different things. And we started to think more deeply about that, about the fact that there's plastic surgery, for example. Well, at the time we were just vinyl. Plastic surgery, obvious, you know, mm -hmm. you remix a piece, you remix a tune, it's plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. um, outpatients, inpatients, there's radiography, radiotherapy, mm -hmm. radiotherapy, radio, <laughs> radiotherapy, there's sick music, yeah, you know, there's all the, all these different things that that you you can have fun with and. For us, it was all about having fun. Can we have fun with this? Can we really? enjoy this concept and we decided that yes we can because really music is all about healing people it's about helping in many different ways helping people get through difficult times in their lives as well as having a party we all have to have a party <laughs> but having a party is also very therapeutic it's a form of therapy yeah. it's like music therapy you know, if, if you go to a good rave or a good festival, you come away, your your body is exhausted because you haven't slept. But something's happened to your mind. Something's changed. Or you may be at home or on the train going to work and you listen to a piece of music that changes your life. And it, it really can. Music can really change your life. I agree, 100%. It, and it, it doesn't change your life for the worst. No. It changes it for the better. And I, I've learned now over the last, well, we've been going 23 years, that the amount of emails and instant messages I get and Instagram messages, whatever, people who tell me their, their life story, that this tune or this podcast or just the music, not from just from hospital, but from drum and bass in general, this music has helped them get through a certain period in their life that they think they wouldn't have got through. And the, you know, there, there are people who've said, I was so depressed, I was ready to kill myself, but then I listened to this tune and it made me realize that I've got a future, mm -hmm. that life's worth living. Now that's really powerful. It is. It's it is. fucking I felt, powerful. I felt it many times in, in, in my life and I know exactly what you're talking I about. I have. I mean, I, I, I did as, as a teenager, particularly, you know, when you're in those difficult years as a teenager where you just don't know what on earth you're going to do, you're lost. You're really lost. You know, you don't know which way to turn. Maybe you've had your first relationship and your girlfriend's left you and you feel like, you're the biggest piece of shit in the whole world. You know, 
life's not worth living. And then in those days, it was put, uh, putting a record on, you mm -hmm. know, you put a record on and you listen to it and a huge change takes place. And you suddenly start to think, do you know what? I'm not important. My problems are not important. Listen to this, this is important. This, this means something. It's, to me, it's, it's like climbing up a mountain. If you're feeling really, really, really down, if I'm feeling really down, yes, I, I love listening to music. I also love to climb a hill or a mountain. Okay. And so that I've got a 360 degree view. And I look around and I realize how small I am and how insignificant my problem is. Or maybe stand on a cliff and just look at look out over the ocean and realize that I don't matter. If I wasn't here, it wouldn't make any difference. My problem doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. You know, this I'm this is bullshit. I'm just being selfish, actually. So I need to get on with my life. I need to go and do something and try and help other people. So hospital was that connection. It was an attempt to try and help other people and express myself with my music. I didn't know if it was going to work. In fact, it probably wouldn't work mm. because most things like this never work. <laughs> it's it's yeah. true. Uh, on this occasion, it has worked. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think I can feel how lucky I am that sure it has worked. <laughs> sure you are. You know. I'm totally not disappointed. I mean, I've had this feeling I will meet passionate people here and that's what I exactly got right now. That's what you got. So it's perfect. Well, Thank you. It's what, there, there, There's one thing that could get me into trouble a lot is the fact that I'm so passionate. Yeah. You know. I'm, I know. I know a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, you do. And it's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I'm passionate about music. I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about mental health. I'm passionate about politics. Oh, politics. Very. Can I ask you a question, a political question? Yes. <laughs> um, today, for the very first time, when I traveled to the UK, yes. um, for the very first time, I've had a passport control yes. at the airport and, you know, Brexit and stuff. We, we've all thought that it's like, all right, they're going to talk about something and it's not going to happen. <laughs> we don't know. And today, for the first time, you know, like one hour of standing, waiting, and all right, it's already happening. It's one here. hour. Yeah, one hour in one line for like when we entered the Luton airport, and we were like, okay, this is Brexit. It's happening. What for you as a um, UK citizen and for you as a musician that travels a lot? What is your opinion on that? Do you think this? Well, is... let's just forget about my profession. Okay. Okay, because I'm I'm very lucky to be a DJ, and. Let's forget about that. Let, let's just look at it from a human perspective. Um, I, I believe firmly that we are all citizens of the world. Um, I don't feel English. Okay. I don't feel British. I'm not. I mean, I am. On my, on my passport, it says yeah. I am. But I know, I know that my origins are Mesopotamia. Okay. Because the human race first started there. That's where it, it evolved from monkeys. And that applies to everybody on this planet. Yeah. So we all have the same DNA, actually. When it comes down to it, we're all traced back. And actually, everybody was black. Mm -hmm. So our ancestors were all black. There's no such thing as a white person. Okay. It just happens that we've lived in a country that, and we bred this color because it, maybe it was advantageous to the environment, you know. So there's no such thing to me as English or Polish or African or American or Russian or, those are labels that are used by politicians. Okay and it's the same with borders. So you were talking about border control. You have to wait an hour. Um, politicians and billionaires, and 
the rich people who control the politicians Politician. mm -hmm. because but actually politicians don't control anything yeah they agree they're controlled by the multinational companies people like Rupert Murdoch mm -hmm. who, the biggest corporations so. yeah new, news corporation he works very very closely with Putin mm -hmm. they're a team they work together um, they also work with Donald Trump and his organisation whatever uh, it, it's, it's like a big mafia um, so borders are used to control populations to make them buy certain things to make them not do certain things they're used to make money through generation of taxes and all the rest of it so my view of Brexit mm -hmm. is it's the biggest pile of fucking shit Okay. Ever to to have occurred to, to my country since Adolf Hitler. Okay. So I believe Brexit is evil um, for everybody on every level, and that and that includes the billionaires who benefit from it because sure. they will benefit from it. Rupert Murdoch is going to really benefit from it. Yeah, you know, someone has to benefit if they made that kind of call. <laughs> he thinks he's going to benefit from it, but actually he's not. It's it's going to make him even more evil than he already is, mm -hmm. which is a bad thing. So there's no good side to it. Yeah, sure. um, Brexit is a pile of shit, and th and that's it. All right. Now, how will it affect me as a DJ? I don't know. I have no idea. Unfortunately because everything is going to the right. I know in Poland the government's going right wing. Here the government is going right wing. Unfortunately, we're going to have a hard Brexit. Yeah. I think I think we will. And I also think what what then is going to happen is that nothing is really going to change because we can't afford the the money mm -hmm. to police this. So the government hasn't prepared themselves, yeah. as you know. The whole of the world is laughing at the British government because we're acting completely like a bunch of idiots mm -hmm. because we're not prepared for Brexit. Mm -hmm. And that includes we haven't got a border border force who are prepared for bre Brexit. And things like here we've got my web shop where we sell t-shirts we sell everything mm -hmm. hospital overseas and allegedly when there's brexit we'll have to trade on wto terms mm -hmm. fuck that mm -hmm. we're, we're just going to sell our t-shirts <laughs> who cares <laughs> I mean, what are they going to do yeah they haven't got time they haven't got the money sure it will take tens of years <laughs> probably to by that time, we'll we'll have a, a socialist government who want to rejoin Europe, yeah. and if if Most likely, yeah. if Europe still exists, sure. This is this is my biggest worry. The union, yeah, the European Union, sure. My biggest worry is that there are too many countries who want to break it up. Yeah. So, and I'm I'm more worried for Europe now than for Britain because we're fucked already. I really don't want Europe to be fucked. Sure, and that, that's my biggest worry because yeah. if Europe's fucked, then, then we are all. Then Putin can just uh -huh. bring it all yeah, back. Yeah. USSR, yeah, it's all mine. Yeah, exactly. That that was that was our uh, first thought when uh, Putin took over the Kremlin and uh, not the Kremlin, the um, Kremlin, Kremlin, yeah, Kremlin, yeah. yeah. And uh, I have loads of friends because I studied Russian philology in university. Right. So I have loads of friends from Ukraine. Yeah. And it was like, all right, all right, he's already halfway here. <laughs> do you, remember, do you like, remember Kazantip? Kazantip, yeah. Yeah, Festi great. Kazantip Festival, festival we brilliant wanted festival. To, we wanted to go there so much. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. That was that was my first thought when I heard this. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to go there so much. <laughs> I, I went there once. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was, I, I had a whole week there. It was, it was just amazing. Amazing event, yeah. Such um, such festivals that we would like to go. We wanted to go to Tomorrowland. We don't know. We've heard different opinions, but it's a very huge, massive event. But we saw some, uh, so many videos of the uh, Burning Man in yeah. the US. Have you been there? No, but that's because I won't go to the, the USA. Okay. 
Okay, just you won't go there. No, and that's also political. Okay, no worries. <laughs> I won't go there. But the best festival in the world is Hospitality on the Beach. Oh yeah, I saw that. In, in <laughs> Croatia. That. Yeah, we, we have, yeah, that's the best Croatia. festival in the world. When is it? Uh, it's the first, it's the second week of July. June, July. Okay, so it's right before a job fest. Yeah. Right before our event. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's yeah, about it two is. weeks before. Okay. Um, it's sold out. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Maybe next, next year. Next. And for the next, we'll see for this year's uh, concert um, how it works for all of us. And for next year, maybe more uh, more stars from hospitality. See how it goes. <laughs> see how it <laughs> see goes. You have many talented people. Because too. it was really funny play, playing playing at Santa Pod was yeah. one of the funniest gigs for me because all of the guys and the girlfriends or wives who go to Santa Pod. They're a certain type of person. Obviously, they're car people. Ah, yeah, just like us. And when when they came into the tent for the gig, mm -hmm. there were like a lot of guys with, with no shirts on. Okay. Really fat. <laughs> okay. Like kind of like almost looking like they want to have a fight, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, we're, we're not that type of. No, 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 no. no. It, was, it was just funny. So, so. We 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 saw we sort of had a had a bit of a laugh really. We we started playing like loads of bangers, like real mm -hmm. proper fucking hard bangers. And sure enough, mosh pit, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then we didn't even know this was going to happen. Like three three girls came on stage and they were strippers. Okay. <laughs> and they started taking their clothes off. Okay. <laughs> and we were like. Okay, and our, our MC was like he didn't he didn't know where to look, you know. He was like he didn't know what to say. <laughs> All he could say was, "Trust me, trust me," because his daughter was in the crowd. <laughs> trust me, trust me, trust me. Trust me. So oh <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was fucking hilarious. And, and then and, and then and then we thought, okay, let's play an hour of Liquid and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so we played like just Liquid. Uh -huh. really chilled out and it was nice and people liked it and they stayed okay. and you know <laughs> so we we ended up although although it was like it was me and Etherwood, Kino and Whiny we ended up sort of going back to back because we were having a lot of fun with this crowd it was a very different crowd mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just before we started playing they had a, a contest on stage to see who could eat the most hot dogs in right. in ten minutes. Okay, you know it was one of those <laughs> five guys sitting there with kind of hot dogs, kind of like, <laughs> a, a, and then they had to kind of drink chili sauce like that. Oh god! It was like you know t a test of the biggest man sort oh. of thing <laughs> like that. It was really Crazy, funny. Great. Oh, we won't have that. <laughs> I believe. Brilliant. But brilliant. we'll have some great cars. You Is there it. anything memorable about Poland? You did you did some gigs in Poland. Did you do you remember something? Memorable Loads. Or? I mean, some really really great shows. Um, I remember when I went with my first live band mm -hmm. in 2004. And we had a show in Krakow in in the concert hall, and we flew BMI. I think that they've gone now, and our instruments didn't turn up. Oh jeez! So we we landed at three p.m. Mm -hmm. The sound check was supposed to be at seven p.m. We were on on stage at nine. Mm -hmm. The next flight in landed at eleven. Mm -hmm. And the staff from the, from the airline said, "Yeah, your equipment's going to be on the, on the flight that lands at 11. So we had to wait in the airport for about okay. eight hours. Oh, and uh, and the promoters were like making phone calls and kind of like telling you know the gig was sold out and the venue was licensed to close at midnight, but they even called the council. And they explained what happened, and the Krakow Council said, "Yeah, you can have an extension. Uh, you can extend till 2 a.m." Um, and everybody in the club waited. So, I mean, it wasn't a club; it was a proper kind of concert yeah, yeah. hall, you know. Yeah. And we we got our equipment. We just fucking <laughs> bombed it to, to the venue. No sound check. No sound check. Just literally, as soon as we walked on stage with our kind of, because we we were in those days, we had no roadies. Uh -huh. You know, we we had no no one to help us, so we carried everything. My wife sold the t-shirts. Okay. 
you know, my wife helped set up the drum kit. Yeah. We are at that level right yeah. now. <laughs> so <laughs> we know we know how it works. So we did everything ourselves. So we literally, as soon as we walked on stage, all sweaty and stressed, and we had all the flight cases. Mm -hmm. Like everybody went crazy, and they just like they were just screaming the whole time while we were setting up our equipment. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? I don't know. I don't know. And then. Literally, we just started, and everything seemed to work. Wow! <laughs> and because of this build-up and this tension, and is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Because of all of this, it was one of the best gigs ever, and the crowd were incredible. And it, even now, and that, that was yeah, that was two thousand and four. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. Yeah, you know, fourteen years ago, fifteen years ago. Even now, like the last time I I. Did a DJ set in Krakow. Three people came up to me and said, "We were at that gig, and well, it's, it's the best gig we've ever seen, well, yeah. and we're never going to forget it." So moments like that really, really stick in people's minds. And for us as a band, it was incredible. Yeah, you know, sure. just the love. I believe it. And I, I think for me, like the amount of love that. I personally get, and when I've played with my bands, like I played with the big band in Audio River mm -hmm. in 2017, uh, it was amazing, absolutely it was amazing. A very nice festival, very good one. It was packed, and we were headlining on that night, and it was just the most incredible feeling, you know. So the amount of love that, for some reason, Polish people seem to feel for what I do. And who I am is very, very humbling for me. It makes me feel very, very lucky, very humble, and I always look forward to coming to Poland. You it's know, great. It's always a good experience. It's great. You told me these guys were like from the show from 15 years ago, and that was uh, one of my uh, one of questions I wrote down. The age group, the target age group of uh, people who listen to drum and bass. Do you think this is music for? Um, mostly for people like I'm 34. For me, I say I am the generation of mm. drum bass. I think I am, but maybe even older people that, than me are the generation. Do you think this music is for all the old generation, or is there any golden era like you know, people who were in their in their 20s 10 years ago? It's Did changed uh -huh. a lot. It's changed a lot because it's now 30 years old as a form of music, you know. Um, that covers three generations pretty mm -hmm. much. So on Sunday I was playing at Fabric, mm -hmm. it's a very famous club in London, mm -hmm. and it was an event called Big Fish Little Fish. Mm -hmm. And Big Fish Little Fish is an events brand that's set up for parents with babies okay. and toddlers mm -hmm. and children up to the age of about 12. Okay. So I played there. I took my son, who's nine, mm -hmm. my youngest son, and his best friend. She's also nine, um, and they they had a they had the best time. Okay. You know they got covered in glitter and <laughs> face paint. I mean, yeah, thing that grown ups do yeah. now. You yeah, know, yeah. They, they did the whole festival thing, uh -huh. and this was a generation of children being exposed to drum and bass and I went in hard. I played a fucking <laughs> I played fucking hard bangers, okay. man. Okay. Because I knew that really I was playing for their parents. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. their parents can't go out to a club because they've yeah. got young children to look after. So sure. they they come to this event and they can go <laughs> yeah, and get and get a bit a bit pissed as well. <laughs> But when we do our festivals um, or our big events. We do we do quite a lot of daytime shows now at Tobacco Dock, Hospitality in the Park. Um, and those daytime shows start at sometimes 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. or noon mm -hmm. and will go through till midnight. And the age range is quite, it's quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I mean, in England, you can't go to one of these events until you're 18 because they sell alcohol. Okay. We've got a lot of fans who are much younger. Like there's loads of fans who are like 10, 12, 14, 
16 who write to me and listen to the podcast and mm-hmm. buy music mm-hmm. um, but at the actual events the age range is 18 to 60 okay to 60 60 older than me even older than me because I'm I'm, 50, I'm 58 now mm-hmm. and you don't look like 50 that's because I, that's because I oh, my world is drum and bass yeah sure. it keeps, keeps me young yeah. um, so maybe 10 years ago 15 years ago I would agree with you yeah it, it's an 18 to 35 year old mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. classic kind of it's not anymore it's completely changed and I think a lot of that's got to do with things like streaming mm-hmm. it's got a lot to do with computer games mm-hmm. yeah I know, I know yeah that's true racing that's games true. that's true when we published that uh, who is the main event so many guys that are crazy about cars Forza. They, they they first thing they've said Forza Horizons. Forza Horizons. yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, yeah, we were yeah. like what <laughs> all yeah. right so yeah that's true and then, then we realized there yeah. was so there was so much drone based in so many games in past two, two decades <laughs> that yeah we don't, you know yeah so crazy. i mean like this this year we had our radio station for the third year running on forza horizons yeah um we've got our music on grip i don't know if you know grip it's a really mm-hmm. really cool racing mm-hmm. game independent game um we've got we've got our music on all sorts of different games uh that usually involve racing we don't really get music on shooting games because there isn't really music <laughs> yeah. but um so we have we'll have eight-year-olds who who are allowed to play forza horizons or whatever sure. listening to drum and bass that's perfect <laughs> and getting introduced to the music you know and sometimes we'll, we'll get a track on the holding page and that that's the kind of that's like the best thing ever. If you get one of your pieces of music on the holding page, mm-hmm. then everybody's going to listen to it yeah. because they have to go to the holding page first. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we had a track by Kino um, called Nocturne on the first Forza Horizons. And they chose that f- for the holding page. On the new for- Forza Horizons, there's a piece of music written by Fred Vian Graphics mm-hmm. on the holding page. And those those pieces of music really influence people. That's true. Yeah. Because they just get exposed to it. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was I was younger, we played the Need for Speed Underground. Yeah. And you know the, the those tracks that were there in the menus and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah, 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 knows yeah, yeah, yeah. them. They are legends yeah. now. If yeah. you play that kind of track today at for example at our event, everyone knows it. Everyone's yeah. crazy about it. Yeah. All right, Tony, thank you very much for your interview and for your time. It was amazing. <laughs> So nice to meet you. You too, man. And I Come will in. see you. And I will see you on Drop Fest in Ju- July. Yeah. I will see you in July, guys. Jap Fest. I cannot wait. It's going to be absolutely crazy. And he's going to drift. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to have a lot of fun. And I'm going to do my first ever drifting. <laughs> perfect. And, we'll record I, it. and I'm going to live stream it. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> Wicked. All right. And I want yeah. to say thank you for inviting me to the festival. Really, oh. <laughs> it, it's a real honor. It's an honor for us. Thank you. Moi drodzy, opuszczamy Hospital Records i widzimy się już na Jabfeście z London Electricity.